Hello friends. Welcome to the Eastern Front channel. Today we will talk with you about the memoirs of Friedrich Paulus adjutant, Arno von Lenski, who fought with Paulus until he was captured in 1943. By evening we had brought at least some order to the confusion. About 7 p.m. we were called to supper, which we took in Paulus's bunker. At first I had to talk about what was happening outside, then events in the cauldron were discussed. With this opportunity one discovered that only in recent days, after its formation by the release of senior officers, had Army Group Don obtained a true picture of the situation in the cauldron. At the end of November its Chief of Staff, Major General Schultz, and shortly afterwards its IA, Colonel Bussey had flown in for a few hours. Since then contact was generally being maintained by radio, General Paulus had no possibility of speaking personally to Field Marshal von Manstein. Nevertheless, the mood in our group that evening was quite high. Hoff's army had started opening up the cauldron and by evening had come forward a considerable distance. If the army keeps up this pace, contact will have been made at the latest in a week, said one of the junior orderly officers. Paulus damped down this optimism a bit, if the 4th Panzer Army maintains its pace. Good, that you make this limitation, it must be obvious to you Zimmermann, that Hoth has been thrown back by the Red Army's most forward forces. The combined thrust with the main forces has yet to come, let us hope that Hoth's army has sufficient breakthrough power. I recall the conversation I had had in Morosovsk the day before with Colonel Wenk, the German staff officer to the Romanian 3rd Army. If I am not wrong, I commented now, the 14th Panzer Corps with the 6th and 25th Panzer Divisions, as well as the 15th Luftwaffe Field Division, form the spearhead of Hoth's army. Romanian infantry and cavalry divisions follow as flank protection. Apart from the 6th Panzer Division, which has just come replenished from France, all the divisions no longer boast their complete fighting strength. This applies especially to the Romanian divisions, which were scattered by the Red Army attack on the November 20th and put to flight. That's right, agreed Schmidt, but in the next few days Hoth will get the 17th Panzer Division. Paulus looked pensively in front of him. When the orderly officers left the room, and only the department chiefs remained he said, I don't understand the army high command anymore. It seems that nothing has been learned from the heavy blows of the last weeks. The composition of the Hoth army is a shattering example that the strength of the Red Army is irresponsibly underestimated. Adam tells me that the few advancing divisions are hardly sufficient to close the new gaps appearing daily on the Chur front. I am of the opinion, General, I added, that our troops on the lower Chur cannot hold their position. Until now the Russians have felt their way forward with security forces, we could only repel them with the utmost effort. With a main enemy attack the Chur front will soon collapse, this threatens the Hoth army's flank. It no longer has a chance of retreating. Paulus nodded, let us trust, gentlemen, that the army high command will bring forward reinforcements in time. Then he turned to me, the army high command has already ordered army group Don to take up positions for a relief attack, Elchlep will inform you of the details. With these words Paulus stood up, we parted from him. I accompanied the IA to his dugout only a few steps away. As we stepped out into the cold winter night, Elfslep said skeptically, quite honestly, I too have only the slightest confidence in Hoth's mission. But you were here from the beginning Elchlep, in immediate proximity to the troops. I can still not understand why the army did not set off immediately to the southwest. That was certainly possible in the first two or three days. Yes, we wanted to, but we had not experienced these nerve-wracking days. Day after day we asked permission by radio to break out. Army Group B supported our requests, Hitler and the Army High Command turned them down. Finally the Army Group confirmed the Army High Command's orders. It was the most obvious tug of war between the Army and the superior commands. As the weaker ones gave in we were overwhelmed. The Army High Command presumed that it could assess the situation in the cauldron better than the 6th Army, which was sitting in the mess. Hitler had fixed the course of the western and southern fronts precisely. No ditch, no village, no piece of soil of the ordered ground was to be given up without his permission. We are now just better paid non-commissioned officers. In his office the colonel showed me a file, here, read it. It was Paulus's selected position for the army. I read something like the following, the 4th Panzer Army does not appear to be strong enough to be able to break out of the Stalingrad ring. 
Should it not however, attain its goal, the chances of a breakout are worsened. Already on supply grounds the 6th Army is unable to maintain resistance much longer. At the moment it is not possible to see how and when the Dawn Front broken through by the enemy can be stabilized. Even should the thrust of the 4th Panzer Army succeed, Hoth's troops are threatened by the danger of being cut off. From this assessment of the situation, the 6th Army Headquarters proposes a breakout from the cauldron to the southwest, in timely accord with the 4th Panzer Army's attack to the northeast with which it will combine on the high ground southwest of Stalingrad. Strengthwise the 6th Army is capable of taking all the wounded with it, in this way the fighting strength of the 6th Army will be maintained. The high command will thus have reserves for the construction of a new front in its hands. In my estimation this was a fundamentally correct and realistic assessment of the situation. I spoke to Elchlep, expressing the following thoughts, whether point 3 can be realized today, I would doubt. This question is certainly difficult to decide, he replied. With our proposal we want above all once more to achieve an exact check of all plan measures. I simply cannot believe that the high command can play so casually with an army of 22 divisions. Nevertheless I am impressed that Hoff's army was not reinforced by a single battalion and we here have to keep on holding out. As a soldier I will always obey the orders of my superiors, but I want to be able to understand them. That has become somewhat difficult recently. I had the greatest confidence in Manstein, but isn't it laughable when the field marshal in this desperate situation comes out stereotyped with the announcement that the Führer has ordered so and so. Should he not be more in tune with our army headquarters, now read this too. He handed me several radio messages from Führer headquarters. From the date stamps it could be seen that they had arrived immediately after the formation of the cauldron. Hardly believable was what was there, the 6th army from then on was to call itself Fortress Stalingrad. Elfslep saw my startled face, that astonishes you, does it? But now at least you know where you are, in Fortress Stalingrad. If I had not read it myself, I would have doubted you, you would be pulling my leg. Stalingrad a fortress, what does Paulus say then, and Schmidt and the other generals about this nonsense? The same as you, it's nonsense, the description fortress does not only apply to the city itself. Even here a comprehensive system is lacking, no bomb-proof dugouts nor constructions with tank turrets, no underground communication passages nor barricades and obstacles are available. The ruins of the buildings and cellars offer some protection against splinters, perhaps even from the weather, but one cannot speak of preparation for a long period of time. But you know that from your own experience. And how does it look on the new western and southern fronts, Elchlep? That is where the description fortress sounds exactly like a joke. There are neither trenches nor dugouts, only holes in the hard frozen, cut up ground. Just holes in the snow, they are our soldiers fighting and resting places, offering them a little protection from the cutting step wind, but nothing more. A strong attack by the Russians and our hungry, half-frozen and overtired soldiers would be unable to hold. These all, close the IA, are things that I can only describe with difficulty. But in the end we are soldiers and we know what orders are. It had become late, I reached out my hand to shake his. Outside the icy northeast wind blew in my face and through my uniform. Shells were exploding in the distance, the sound of vehicles came from the Potomac, Stalingrad Road. In the air throbbed some junkers 52s were Heinkel 111s, which unfortunately were bringing us only a fraction of the things we needed to live and fight. Uneasily I churned in my first night in the cauldron, the night of the December 14th, tossing to and fro on my straw sack. I got up while it was still dark, the orderlies had already prepared the sparse breakfast. There was a slice of bread more than usual from some loaves that I had brought from Morosovsk. I sat at the table with General Paulus, each of us had a cup of hot black coffee in front of us. Slowly we chewed the three slices of bread allotted to us, Paulus's eyes were directed at the situation map on the wall. The front at the big breakthrough position west of the Don was shown as I had indicated. From Kotelnikovsky thick blue arrows pointed north. Have we any news about Operation Hoth, General, I asked. As Schmidt informed me by telephone earlier, the attack is going according to plan. Since yesterday we have had verbal communication with Army Group Don through the decimeter apparatus, so we can actually be informed earlier than before. For the time being I am not very confident, 
Their report yesterday on the situation outside the cauldron was more serious than I thought. Look at the map, the Italian 8th Army is threatened in the flank and rear. They are almost just battle groups that should be securing the wide breakthrough points. If the enemy attacks here again the catastrophe will be even greater than it is now. I simply cannot understand, General, how we can stabilize the front, have we still no troops to form a new army? Won't all the army high command's measures come too late, will the Italians hold their sector of the front on the dawn? Should the Italian 8th Army be thrown back then the Hungarians will also be forced to give up their positions. Then even the German 2nd Army on the Voronezh front sector will be threatened on its flank. It is presumed that it is possible to stabilize the Holcher, Don front, and that the Army High Command has operational and strategic reserves and has already sent them marching to the threatened places. I cannot be certain about this with you, after the bad experiences of the last three weeks I have become somewhat skeptical about the decisive and resolute capability of the Army High Command. Only a question, if you will permit General Elchlep showed me a radio message from Hitler, ordering that Hoth should re-establish the old front. That would mean we would have to remain here. With the current uncertain situation outside the cauldron, in my opinion such an order would be nonsense. The order really reads like that, nevertheless we have made preparations to enable Hoth to make a counter-thrust. I hope that the Army High Command recognizes at least at the last minute that my proposed abandonment of the city and breakthrough to the southwest is the only possible way of saving the army. This was only a small part of Arno von Lenski's memories. I am waiting for your discussions in the comments, also do not forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel see you all soon for now.